What did you, you know, you said you were curious. What did you think it was going to feel like? I thought it would be the best feeling in the world. And it just, you said you didn't feel much of anything. Um, excitement. Oh, that's right. Okay. But other than that, no. While most people are content with Halloween's playful spookiness, there are some who turned it into a license for madness and chaos. I don't feel like hearing this guy talk, though. What's up, Jay? And then you said you took, was it the head in the hand? Uh -huh. um, and um, what did you put that in? Well, there's a, th there's a three rule for bodies. I like to call it the three rule. Okay, tell me about that. Three days, the body starts to stink. No, three hours, rigor mortis sets in. The body stiffens. Three days, the body stiffens. Pick the one with the cop. Like this one? Oh, this one? At the top? Scroll down. No, the top one. The top one? The cop in the stairs. I've already seen the, this cop in the stairs one. They find a head in the bucket, right? It's right here. And, and I thought... Examiner and former boat ram. Today to report him missing? Because the place people already called to see if I had seen him. She said... Keep going. Maybe the adrenaline opened that back. Trip to the boat ramp. You go wait, you're skipping go back, bro. It's a two hour video. Nobody wants to go to 2021. It's right here. Yeah, because there's an arm. There's an arm. There's another arm. There's another one. Parents have some concerns of some stuff they may have found in your room? Yeah, I believe so. And what would it be? A human head and hands. What? What? Now I want to John with the address emergency. Hi, there is an emergency. I found I found something in my son's closet wrapped in a plastic bag. Okay, what was it? I think it's a human head. It's a what? I think it's a human head. On March first, two thousand twenty-one. Police at Grand Junction, Colorado, received this chilling 911 call. A mother has just discovered a disturbing secret hidden within her son's closet. Even more terrifying, he's currently just outside the house while she makes this call for help. Bro. Why do you think it's that? Because it looks like it's on ear. Is it all, is it bloody or is it like anything like that? Can you just come? Do I have to take a picture and send it to you? The dispatcher tries to get as much information as possible to make sense of this shocking call and give officers an idea of what they might be walking into. Did your son there now? He just pulled up. We wanted to make sure he was here before we called. How old is he? 19. He told us about the fascination with the morbid, but he was channeling it, I felt, into becoming a crime scene investigator, but not so much. Do you think he's going to be cooperative with us? I don't know. I don't think he'll be violent. Okay. Just came back from his son's house. Did you have any weapons in his room, or do you guys have any in the house? I don't know. I think that he has a... Did they identify who it was? Before he gets in his room, he's out by the car now, so... Is the bag still in the closet? No, it's in my kitchen sink. And there's a secondary bag that I have not opened. It's currently covered with a towel. And there's a it's second bag. Yeah, there's a second bag. Though. I don't know what's in it. I didn't open it. I'm sorry. Did he take? Did he take the second bag out of the closet? I took the second bag out of the closet and put it in the sink. Where's Brian now? I think he's still outside. And you're in the backyard now? I am. Yes, because I don't want him to hear me. Despite the horrifying nature of this call, police could not have anticipated the twisted tale of violence they were about to embark on. Nor did they have any idea just how shocking the motive behind the inexplicable horror would be. One day prior to responding to this harrowing incident, the emergency services had attended to a rather unusual call at 2 a.m. on Sunday, February 28, 2021. 19-year-old Brian Cohey Jr. is having a bad night. 
As officers arrive at the Blue Heron boat ramp, they can scarcely believe their eyes. The majority of the following footage has never been seen before. What? It's been analyzed by a qualified team, including a licensed professional counselor, a licensed clinical psychologist, and a former detective, former licensed polygraph examiner, and former hostage negotiation commander and instructor. How can we call a tow for that? I don't know, because he'd have to get in the friggin' water. Yeah. Wait, look at the car. They want me to text them a photo of the car because they think they might be able to pull it out. Okay. Um, so you already have, you're already in contact well, with them? Well, yeah, but I have, I only have like 10% battery left on my phone and now he wants me to text him a photo of the car. And I'm Yo, like, you guys have oh, all seen point. this shit? <laughs> um, I can take one and text it to him for you if you'd like. Oh, guys, should we do more like, should we do more like crime shit? Should we do like a, like a fucking crime stream soon? That'd be fantastic. Thank you. It's not every day that police officers see a car floating in the Colorado River. To try and make sense of what they're observing, the officers speak to Brian's mother. He uh, is an inexperienced driver. Okay. He'll be trying here on the angle. When he got out and like he down, he could really right through. I'd be down, I'd be and down. He went to get back in. He wasn't able because of the angle to pull it out. I don't know. He's, he's right there. Okay. Oh, the there's a, he's right there the whole time? Sounds good. Officers decide it's best to get the story straight from the horse's mouth, and 19-year-old Brian has no choice but to own up to his mistake. Little do these officers know, there's a sinister secret lurking in the background of this crazy story. Is this your son right here? Yep. Wait. Hey, you want to come out and talk to me real quick? Sure, I Appreciate mean, it, I'm really cold. Is it okay if it's in here? Because he it's fine. Pants he had okay, submerged. that's fine. Yeah, I, didn't, I did not know that. No, yeah. that's, please, please, please stay in the car. Yeah. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Nobody else in the car? Nope. No, okay. No, just us. I'm the father. That's the mother. This is our son. He just like, Sounds good. 20 minutes ago and said, Dad, I parked at the boat ramp and I messed up. He's I tried like, to get out of the car and it slid down. Well, you're not hurt, right? You're okay? No, just a little cold is all. Just your pride a little bit. <laughs> and probably seven thousand dollars okay all right man um do you have your id with your driver's license by any chance thankfully do you know what's crazy is they're like joking around with him right now they're like laughing and cracking jokes he's probably already killed that dude right what are you doing down here bud well i felt like i needed to get out like okay. and i figured why not park here and just just relax a little just bit. Relax and think. Okay. And I parked on the boat ramp, okay. and I thought it would be easy to get out. Uh -huh. But when I tried to, where I did put you it... park exactly? Were you down the hill a little I bit? Was, yeah, just a little bit. Okay. And then when he got back in, go ahead. right, right, yeah. When I yeah. got back in, I tried to put it in drive, mm -hmm. and it didn't go up. So then I tried putting it in low gear, shimming it a bit. That didn't work. Were you facing down? No, I was facing. I was facing up. Okay. You, you, you and me, you were you back down? Yeah. That's a really good because idea. That's it's a predicament so ridiculous that the responding officers can't help but laugh. How ideas. we're gonna handle this, man? <laughs> I don't know. Do I get a tow going for a car in the river and see if anybody will take this? I'm gonna work on that. I don't brother. know, man. So I'm kind of glad you were coming down here because I was like, uh, it's not. A bro, I, chat. Oh, we can't watch a whole two-hour thing, bro. Fuck. I'm gonna get invested, chat. I'm going to get invested, and I'm going to want to do it, bro. Stop it. God, I hate you guys. <sighs> Skip until they show up to the house. Is this where the house is? Oh, nah. Let's stay. Oh, no. All right. But you're not injured. You don't have any. That's cuts. a guy. That's a guy. That's him. That's a guy. All right, chat. We'll do. But you're not injured. We'll do like Officers a like a crime thing, like every couple weeks or something. On the bumper, but they we do the have to mix in more like custody. that. However, on March 1st, the next day, the police once again find themselves at the Blue Heron boat ramp. A homeless man by the name of Warren Barnes has been reported missing. Officers speak to the woman who called in the report. What's the I, I best? Okay, chat, chat, chat. I'm gonna. Can I give you guys homework? Can I genuinely give you guys homework? Can I? Okay. Um. Okay. Tonight in the general. Okay, general chat. 
throw throw links to like videos and crimes and shit like that because I, I don't I don't know I don't know too much I don't know which YouTube channels are the best like what is this explore with us I mean they got five mil are they the best one they got the best ones oh oh they do got good good ones huh Those are all long. I'm down for some long ones, though. I mean, if if you guys are ready to, like, lock in for some long ones, I'm down, bro. I genuinely am. Um, We can mix in, like, some long ones, but... Code Blue Cam, JCS. JCS. What is this? Oh, my... All right, JCS. Dude, I've seen, wait, I've seen one of these. Wait, hold on. Yeah, look, bro. I've, I, I think I've watched like a part of this one or something. Did he, wait, did JCS make one on the, on the Parkland shooter? Dude, he did look. I mean, I watched this one. And or no, wait. Yeah. It's a glaring manifestation of shame. I watched this video. All right. Um. I mean, I'd be down. Dude, I'd be down. Why did they, they only have 20 videos? They haven't made a video in a year. Okay. Um, I'm down. They they upload often. So honestly, chat. Whenever they release one, we could just watch it. Know what I mean? Because it's not like too, it's not too often, but it's enough to get excited. Um, I own Monique's Bridal downtown, and I give him a chair. Yeah, I want to see when they go to a house. Oh, yeah, this is the house. Here we go. Dress, wisely leaving their sirens off as they approach. This could have frightened the young suspect, and it's important to keep him calm for the initial interaction. What's going on, man? The deputy makes contact with Brian using a friendly. Oh, these videos are good, dude. Chad, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Calm. All right. Of course, at the same time, the deputy is certainly scanning the area for any potential threats, as well as making sure that Brian has his hands where he can see. Yeah, them. they pause it and give me. Yeah. All right. Okay. So parents have some concerns of some stuff they may have found in your room. Um. Yeah, I believe so. And what what would it be? A human head and hands. Do you have anything on you that's gonna cut, poke, hurts, stick me anything without reaching for nothing? Don't reach for nothing. My phone and my oh, wallet. That's okay. it. Well, I'm gonna have you face that way. Put your hands on top of your head for me, real quick. I just want to make sure you know that interlace your fingers for Bro, me, real quick. Why right? would he say it? It's important that the deputy only ask enough questions to figure out exactly what's going on. Why do you say it like that? And while this is not the kind of encounter that even a veteran police officer would be accustomed to, it's Brian's parents who must slowly absorb the shock of their son's admission. I'm going to have you walk over here. You're going to sit in the back of my partner's patrol car for a minute, okay? Not yet. Okay. Just sit back there and hang out for me, okay? Please. Can you walk me inside, let's, let's, please? Let's walk you off through this. What happened in the video game. Okay. Let me do it. You go inside. You well, let's, let's stay out here with let's me for a minute. Let's sit down. Come on, sit down, please. Can, can I go in there and verify here? Oh, first? yeah, please. Yeah, we haven't seen it. Yeah, we okay. haven't seen it. It's under the towel in the sink. Okay. Yeah. Under the towel in the sink? Annie, say what you might have given Just make sure that guy goes in the car first. I have to say, yeah, you can go in the sink, okay. right? Uh, well, yeah, okay. Right there. No, yeah. there's nothing on your hands. Yeah. House is empty. Okay. You just had a bad feeling about what happened this weekend. Okay. And she said there's a bag in his closet, and okay. she opened it up. And she called me and said, you know, here we go. The deputy correctly asks for permission to enter the house so that he can confirm the grim contents of the kitchen sink. I covered this with a towel. Okay. Let me see it. Oh. You see it run. I don't want to look at it. Yeah. Just sit back there and hang out with me, okay? Oh, my God. 
Yeah. You said your name was Brian? Yeah. Uh, I'm not feeling too well. You're not feeling too well? All right. No, these past few days I've been very, very anxious. That's understandable. So what we're going to have you do here is I'm just going to have you sit in the back here, okay? Uh -huh. I'm going to turn on the air for you in a second. That way you're not too hot. Are you a hot-blooded or cold-blooded kind of guy? I am very cold-blooded. I prefer cold. Well, no, actually, sorry. Hot-blooded. Hot -blooded. So you prefer the cold. Okay, fantastic. Thank All you. right. Hop in here. I know you're tall, so it's a little bit of a tight squeeze. But Dude, the kid's just like weirdly, right. weirdly calm, smiling. Like the officer has no response to this observation. Hey, holding up, Brian. I mean, okay. what do you even say? A bit thirsty. You guys have any water in your home? What do you even say, bro? Interrogation. Over the next two hours, they will hear a shocking story of blood-curdling evil. And before the interview is over, they will even learn the dreadful truth about Brian's ill-fated trip to the boat ramp. Bro. Guys, fuck you. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. For getting me... <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh my God. You guys are so fucked up, bro. Play some slots. Oh, you guys are so fucked up. All right, here's the deal, chat. We gonna get locked into some of these, bro. All right? Um, I like that. It'll give us a little something. It'll give us a little something different to do, you know? I'm excited. Oh, fuck! Oh, thank you. Well, this is Lisa. She will try. Hi, how are you? Okay, you. Good, thanks. Never really good. Okay. Any seats? Uh, sure. Ooh, get all this special chair in. <laughs> no, yeah. the special chair because it's soft and I'm old. <laughs> Brian is as cooperative and pleasant with the investigators as he was with the deputy who escorted Dude, it makes you so uncomfortable when when they walk in, they act like he's not just like a fucking killer. You know? They have to walk in and just act normal. And it's, yeah, the, the casual, like, small talk right when they get in, it just, like, cringes me out because it's like, bro, I just... The sheriff's office, <sighs> but his nervous shaking and insatiable thirst indicate he is perhaps not as calm as he's trying to appear. The question is whether he's anxious about his fate or excited about his moment in the spotlight. One thing to keep in mind is that, according to his mother, Brian is diagnosed with ADHD and autism, and leg shaking can be a normal, stimulating behavior for people. With these diagnoses... I do that. Oh my god. Oses. They read Brian his Miranda rights, and he agrees to speak with the officers. Friend from here? Yeah. Don't worry, you go to school? I've, uh, going to Broadway Elementary. Dude, it's not because my CT Stop it. Then I went to Brooklyn Middle School. Right. Graduated in the last year. Good for you. Okay. Do you work? Yeah. Where do you work at? Not even part time. I was gonna say part time, not even. I'm gonna do this so you guys can see. Bagger slash Gracie Grip for Safeway. I work anywhere from two to four days a week. It may seem at first glance that the detectives are engaging in idle chit chat to set Brian at ease, but this is part of rapport building. And it's also crucial for them to establish early on that Brian has been handling responsibilities such as school and work, and is perfectly capable of carrying on a normal conversation. This will make it much harder for Brian to claim before a jury that he was unable to tell right from wrong. Dude. How did you get here? I murdered someone. Okay. It seems that Investigator Berg was merely asking how Brian physically arrived at the sheriff's office. But Brian doesn't stand on ceremony. With a tone and head tilt that suggests he's bragging, Brian makes the ultimate confession. In fact, he's all too willing to discuss this horrific crime with detectives. 
So start back at the beginning and go slow and tell me as many details as you can remember. So, because I mean, Murray going to jail for 15 years probably? I have no idea. Because we're at the beginning. It's, <laughs> it's murder. I mean, I'm going to jail for okay. 20, probably. 20? So I figure. Buddy, you get in life. <laughs> you get in life, dude. Learn as much about you and what you did as I can. Well, many details you can get a little better. Yeah, probably fucking twenty before you get shanked in there. Brian's polite exterior only adds to the surreal depravity of his confession. He's somewhat of a unique suspect. Yeah, it was the night of February twenty-seventh. It was a full moon. When was it? Was this and this year? Really when was this? So well. Last, Last year? I am in a bad state of mind at that time. I have... Oh, 2021? Disorder, so I am not thinking something positive. Dude, this just... What the fuck? This came out four days ago and has 8 million views? Okay. And I am cruising around for an hour, an hour and a half. Um... So I fill up on gas halfway through and I'm eventually driving underneath the bridge near the sheriff's office. I'm bad with speaking. I'm bad with words. I'm just yeah. by the way, I'm a habitual link shaker. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do you send people who have committed crimes like me? Do we stay in this county jail or are we moved? It all depends on what the judge says. Brian maintains his spirit of cooperation, but he's clearly concerned about what happens after this interview is over. Hi, Madison. It's interesting to note how he compares himself to others with the phrase, people who have committed crimes like me, almost as if he has joined an exclusive club. Yeah, it's so like he's like, like <laughs> what? Uh, yes, I don't have to break down. Yeah, there's a road underneath, right? What the fuck? Uh -huh. Half under the overpass. And I was driving along, and I see a shape here on the railway track. So I'm like, oh, interesting. And I go up, and as I'm looking, I see a large thing wrapped in a canvas. Okay. And I'm like, that's a homeless person. So I grab my knife. I put on three layers of gloves because plastic gloves can be trailer users because they're so thin, the final gloves, mm -hmm. by printing your fingerprints through. So I put on two, three on one hand. I took the knife, I pulled back the canvas, and I stabbed his neck. Okay. He was panicking at first in his old man voice. He was in his 50s. I don't know why I, don't know why I call an old man. He was saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why? Why? And I just kept on stabbing his neck. I was, is this okay if I do a demonstration? Oh, yeah. This is him. I was straddled on top of him like this. Okay. And uh, he couldn't fight back. It was actually surprisingly easy. I was barely breaking the sweat. I thought, oh, this guy, he's going to be tough. But no, it was actually surprisingly easy. And during the time, I was growling and making the animalistic noises. <laughs> Oh, he, yo, point, yo. No doubt that Brian is excited to tell the investigators all about Bro. his horrific deed. Not only is he pleased to be holding court, he's actually reliving the murder and relishing the memory. Dude, that's genuinely insane. by a smile. Psychopath. As for any question of this crime being premeditated, Brian admits to having put on three layers of gloves, which he already had with him. The whole ordeal lasted about a minute and a half. Okay. And when I was finished stabbing him, he took out his last breath, a grunt, and his head was halfway cut off in stabs. All the while, no, actually, after I killed him, I just couldn't stop saying stinky, dirty, dirty, stinky, stinky. It wasn't, I wasn't selling anything, but. What the fuck? In an eerie coincidence, problem, on one dude. of his social media accounts. Brian identifies himself as that stinky boy registered under his email ID. Good morning, Sam. I don't know. Okay. But you remember doing it, so. Yeah. I suppose it was just me speaking out my mind at that moment. It was like pouring out of the mind. Were you worried about, I mean, this looks like it's pretty close to the road and stuff. Somebody seeing it well, or catching it? Well, it was 11 p.m., okay. so not many were driving by. Well, it was behind the pillar. So, like, here's the road. Uh -huh. It was here. So, people would only see a brief 
thing here and here. So were you worried about them sinking? I was worried about one of them stopping. But what did you think would happen if somebody... Well, Dude, this is insane. If they looked, well, it was quite dark under there, so they wouldn't have seen the guy unless they looked. Um, they would have seen me holding a bloody 12 inch knife. Literal kitchen and knife. Gloves and wearing a mask to conceal my identity. Oh. Mask. Okay. So you weren't doing it for COVID. You were Buddy doing got murked by Maya, Michael um, Myers, bro. Socially, social <laughs> right. um, uh, Yeah, but no one stopped. And I'm just like, huh. Hey, the bystander effect. His laughter and offhand comments speak to his mindset, which is that nothing is wrong. Brian mentions the bystander effect here, which is the idea that the more people there are watching a crime, the less likely that anyone Okay, but like, all right, I need to hear how you got it. it back to your house. There are a few different reasons behind this, but we know that it often occurs because people may be afraid that they'll be judged by the rest of the crowd if they step in first to do something. He doesn't spare a detail. Yeah, Ultimately, it's like he's... people are social creatures, and the vast majority of he people like chose loves to do it, whatever dude. the rest of the crowd does. It's a rare person that steps forward alone. I know that you got a cut on your hand. Is that from... Oh, that was when I was doing gas, when I was filled up. What happened was, because I don't want to be seen in a gas station with a knife poking out of my pocket. I put it in the car on the back seat floor. When I'm done with it, I try and grab it, but my hand slips and grabs the blade. And as I pick it up, it slices these two fingers. Okay. Interesting. And then, let's see. Yeah. And then after that, I stripped his clothes. I cut open his belly. You see his guts. They're really pink. <laughs> Sorry, that was morbid. One of the exceptional aspects of Brian's confession is the level of detail he provides. Together with his casual commentary and jokes, these details convey to investigators that Brian is being fully truthful about what he did. It's also worth noting that morbid humor has long been one of Brian's trademarks. What about other people in the neighborhood? He didn't really, you know, he had a couple of friends that he's had that's some evil shit, bro. Love of sick humor. While in a youth diversion program two years earlier, Brian asked the other teens if they enjoyed a snack known as crispy meat bites. He joked that the recipe involved running your cat or dog through a meat grinder and then frying them up. Okay, dude. <sighs> How do we let it get to this point, bro? Anybody that fucking says that should be put in a padded room. Like, I don't care. Like, that's genuinely fucking crazy. Despite Brian's predilection, nobody who humor, says some Kyla's shit like that is normal. Investigators that she never worried about her daughter being friends with him. He didn't seem scary to me at the time. He just seemed unusual. Like, mm -hmm. in the way that my nephew and other people I know that are on the spectrum are just a little unusual. Like, not a lot of eye contact, you know, things like that. But he never... That, dude, it's crazy. Oh my god, here we go. ...goes into further nauseating detail about the post-mortem mutilation of Warren Barnes. Dude. Destroyed his eyes by stabbing them. <laughs> Okay. And then I cut off his hands. I put those in plastic Ziploc bags. And then I cut off his right arm at this joint okay. and at this joint. And then at this arm, I tried cutting it here. And then I tried cutting it here. But what happened was I accidentally broke his bone. This one, it was poking out. Okay. And so I left that one here partially cut. It's remembered here, bone sticking out. And then I left his body there. And then I took the head, put it in a leftover pizza box from the dinner a few nights ago. And then I took the hands, put them in the back, drove home, hid the hands and head in my room, cleaned the knife, threw away the garbage with, with his blood on it, and then put the blood stained, wasn't stained, it had splatters on it. I put it in the dish in the um the washing machine. What what did you put in there? I put the outfit I murdered him in. in the washing machine. Yeah, I was wearing it. Okay. In, he uh, says it so casually. Put it on high speed so it would effectively remove the blood. Okay. 
flash it twice. You'll notice again that not only is Brian's level of detail. Um, yes, I, I was talking about the outfit that I murdered him in. Like, just so casual. It's, it's insane. Remarkable and disturbing. He talks about the steps he took to avoid getting caught. These will undoubtedly be important elements to any eventual prosecution as it goes to establishing his state of mind. Back up just so I don't lose track of where my mind is. So you cut him open, you cut his arms off, his hands off, all that before he went home? Yeah, before I went home, I tossed the arm bits around. Like, I took the right arm bit, threw it out, okay. took the left arm bit, threw it out. I went somewhere around that bridge? <sighs> yeah, but look in a... Because I know crime scenes can be a very wide area. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to look in a... Five in a ten foot area, so like dude, this is a zoom in. So here's the road, and here's where my car was parked. You're going to his corpses here. The interview continues to get more and more bizarre. In addition to reliving the mutilation and full How does it get more bizarre? Brian enthusiastically goes over the dimensions and location of the crime scene as if he's a police lieutenant giving a briefing to his dude, officer. That's so fucking weird. I was thinking that, dude. He's literally writing it down. He's explaining it like he's someone who solved it. Like he's solving his own crime type shit. You know? Like it's reminding me of Criminal Minds or like Dexter. You could have just walked over here. I could have. It's no use trying to deceive from so that's off. north and you threw what all did you throw while you were there i mean how many pieces I, am i looking for there are two pieces of arm this section and this section okay. just in this general area i can't i couldn't say where they are armed with information they've been fed from the interrogation police officers descend on the area there they find a scene that will no doubt haunt them for the rest of their lives. Bro. It's right here. Oh, you see it? Yeah. Because there's an arm. <laughs> hey. The female cop starts to laugh when she sees an arm. It's unfortunate that the family and the court will hear this. There's an arm. There's another arm. Why'd she laugh like that? There's another one. I don't have a clue. This is like something out of TV. Maybe it was like shock, like, can't really believe it laugh type shit, you know? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've laughed at like some weird shit in, in a shock factor, you know? Well, there's three. There, there, and there. Pieces down there. I mean, I think we've all done that. As police officers less than half a mile away take measure of the bleak crime scene under the bridge, Detective Norcross probes more deeply into the whereabouts of the rest of Warren Barnes' remains. You took, was it the head and the hands? Mm -hmm. um, and what did you put that in? Well, there's a three rule for bodies. I like to call it the three rule. Okay, tell me about that. Three days, the body starts to stink. No, three hours, rigor mortis sets in. Dude, <laughs> all right, bro. Three days, Body starts. All right, man. His ego is stroked, and he feels that he's earned the approval of the detectives. Yeah, so what did you... You have the head and the hand at yeah. your house. The head, I put... Because it was starting to stink, I was planning on throwing the head and hands. Bro, he, he would have made a good crime investigator. What a waste. What a waste of a human. Wait, like, genuine. Not genuinely. in the trash bag. Not in the kitchen trash. But they were both in trash bags. The head was in a trash bag, and I hide it in the trash bag. Hands, I put in a trash bag as well. They were in Ziploc bags. And I was go, I was planning, do they sell empty paint buckets? Mm -hmm. I was planning to buy an empty paint bucket, put the head in it, seal it, and then I was going to throw it off in some dish. Okay. The hands I would throw in a different spot, wherever. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I have it right. The head is inside of a trash bag. It was. Well, where is it now? In the kitchen sink. My parents searched through my room and they found the head and hands. Oh, my okay. God. And so are the head and the hands in the kitchen sink now? I'm not sure. Okay. So they're in the kitchen sink now. 
Did your parents put them there? But they were in my closet. As of now, and oh, dude, he was just keeping them in his bedroom closet. Like, I... <laughs> what was he like doing with them? I can only imagine what the fuck was going on, bro. Investigators have only found a head, hands, and several pieces of arm. That leaves the mystery of where the rest of Warren Barnes is. Wait, what? What exact kind of trash bag? Wait, what's the rest of right, it? Like a kitchen one or what? Like a kitchen, kitchen one. Okay. White kitchen? One that you put in a trash can. Yeah. And then what about the hands? They were inside Ziplocs, you said. Both in the, it's in the same, they're both in a different trash bag. Okay, the white kitchen trash bag. Yes. But now they're in the kitchen sink. The torso? Yes. And you talked about cutting the... Uh, I used to be a paint cutter. I know it's not easy to just cut off hands. Oh, yeah. It was it was with the knife. I was just... So did you practice on anything else? No. Or how did you know how to do it? Um, no, I I just went along as a process. The bones, I just pressed the blade down and went... Okay. Put them at the ligaments. Okay. And how hard was it to do that? To get them actually... Not the particularly hard. Yeah. hard. I was just more frustrated that I broke okay. the bone. So if you hadn't got frustrated, what would your... I mean, it sounds like what you did, we know. Did you have a different plan? Um, what the original? The original? Because I always wanted to know what it felt like to cut up someone. Okay. So you know, because... So why did you stop? Why did you stop? Because the arms were... Just, that's it. And that's all I wanted to know was, was like, cutting off a limb. And I'm just like, okay. Okay. Again, the mind reels when confronted with the nonchalant attitude Brian has toward discussing the murder and dismemberment of a human being. And you said you studied criminology and forensics and all that? I do not, do not college study or school study. It's like a packing interest. I understand. But what, were you worried about, like, leaving evidence behind? Or oh, caught? Totally. totally. Tell me about that. Oh, like, he's... <laughs> He's smiling from fucking ear to ear this whole time. You did that. Well, I was figuring the police don't, this is not to be taken offense, but police, they don't seem to care as much about high-risk individuals, homeless people, prostitutes, etc. So I was deliberately looking for someone who lived that type of life. Okay. And I found a homeless person. And the original goal was just leave him there. But I was worried about the fibers on the outfit I was wearing that would be on his, his uh, clothes and stuff. So I deliberately messed up the clothes. This is an outstanding amount of premeditation for a youth offender. Yeah. It's a shocking amount for anyone, but particularly because of his age, his executive functioning is years from being developed, and yet he's thought so much of this through. It's chilling to think what he may have been capable of had he not been caught. Bro, he's 19. Brian remains engaged, casual, and even jovial as he describes his mindset on the night of the murder. His detailed concerns about getting caught will make it very difficult for his lawyers to mount an effective insanity defense. According to Kylan Light's mother, Heather Gale, this isn't the first time that Brian talked about choosing a little jump scare the right there. Was he expecting that? Anything else you've even things you've heard from Kylan come to mind? She told me, dude. Oh my. But I was also surprised that but I was no, six months. Brian's internet search history adds an interesting element to this. It homicidal thoughts every day. Homicidal ideation. How to cope with murderous thoughts. That should be flagged immediately. Dude, you're gonna know when I talk about a fucking laptop charger and give me 17 ads on fucking Instagram about a laptop charger. And you can't even catch this guy when he looks this up? As he looked up homicidal thoughts every day and how to cope with murderous thoughts. So you come close or seen somebody or chickened out or anything in the past? No. I mean, I was looking for a deliberately secluded place like that one. I wouldn't just go up in Clifton and find someone walking down the street and stab them. No, that's, that's too public. Everyone sees that. Well, have you looked like at the homeless places or anything in the past? I have, yes. I will go on night drives often, maybe okay. once every two weeks. Now just peruse the streets. 
so before this guy, how close did you come? Uh, not at all. Not at all? You just drive around and yeah, look, just try and find you see anybody interesting? And, you know, in your mind thought of a plan? Well, occasionally when you see girls walking down the street, uh, I take a glance at them because uh, okay. it really is like Ed Kemper where half of me says, well, I'm quite Ed a Kemper, American serial killer, murdered six young women and several members of his family. See, I want to see, bro, Loki. I want to watch videos with you guys like this about like serial killers, bro, and get like, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of fucked up like that, man. I find it like, I don't know. I think like crime's interesting. That's what's I'm being honest. I'm no Casanova. But after he says, I want to take that girl home and take her feel nice. Oh. And the other half of the, it's just like what Ed said, is I want to see what her head looks like on a stick. Brian is describing a mindset that's detestable, yet he delivers it with a smile and a laugh. This what? obvious excitement in describing both his mindset and the murder raises questions about his psychological history. As well, another internet search Brian made reveals that he may have considered other sickening plans as well. As wait, wait. Other searches? So he searched this up. Extreme paranoia. I don't even know what that means. Personality disorder. Avoidant personality. How do people react to a home invasion? How do people react to being held at knife point? How deadly is a neck stab wound? Are you, Bro. Come on, man. How is he not flagged? Genuinely. How? He searched for how do people react? His friends thought this. Was there a chance that his parents did too? Uh, do things. Okay. Are you doing to see you learn and obey that last one? Is? Yeah, I know what they are. I was curious. Yeah. If All right, chat. Um. Well, I figured my mother would have confronted me about it, but no, she was. She didn't even say it. Do you know who the person was that you killed? Uh, no. I took his wallet. I didn't look at it. I just picked it up, briefly scanned over it, and put it in my car. Apparently, it was worn. My mom told me this before she found out that the missing person was Warren Brown, born in 63. Brian doesn't seem particularly interested in knowing more about his victim, and the detectives turn Brian back to the subject of the evidence. So we talked about the stuff there. We're gonna go look for Jamal's house in the sink, apparently. What's up, uh, Sophia? The knife is where my dad found it in the golf box. I don't know where it is. What did the knife look like that you found in the? You know when you buy like a ten-piece knife set, the mm -hmm. biggest one in there. Okay. I think when when we moved the day to Terry the daycare, we probably bought all new kitchen, and I think he just took it out of the kitchen because we found it in his car before. Brian, you don't need this. That I do. I don't trust anybody. Okay, you don't find any no, fizzy. or anything on it. I cleaned it. All of his belongings, except for his wallet right here. And his head, his head. <sighs> Dude, crazy. I can't sit here and watch the whole 140 right now, but... So I, sh I, I herded the cat into the sleeping bag and... Wait, what? And beat it and strangled it and broke and snapped its neck? Wait, what is this? Cat into a sleeping bag. And it's pretty big stuff. Tell me about that. This was 2018 Halloween. A stray black cat had been coming around our house. This was before I moved into my mom's. This was at my dad's. And I was thinking about killing him. The video is redacted in this part, but the transcript from the sheriff's office says that Brian told detectives that he herded the cat into a sleeping bag and beat it, strangled it, and snapped its neck. He then decapitated the cat, hid the body in a shoebox, and hid the head in a wine cork box. It's just straight up psycho. So he started with animals then. That's how it always is, bro. It seems clear that Brian has a sick interest in decapitation. There are chilling parallels between what he did to the cat and to Warren. Literally! decapitation and keeping the heads in boxes. Bro! Both times he preyed on those he knew were vulnerable and that he believed no one would notice. And then I disposed of the trash and got away with it. Okay. And that did you keep them for a while like you did this guy? Or? I kept it for three days. Then it started to stink. So you got the three days and it stinks? Well, 
also because bacteria starts to float the body after a day to three days. So the story that Brian might have killed. Yo, stop, stop putting his face on my screen, bro. Jump scare every single goddamn time. It's that like is actually a widespread rumor in Grand Junction. Um, did you ever hear about Brian, either from him or anybody else, about him killing a cat? Yes, I remember hearing about it, but it also just sounded like made up rumor, so I didn't really like think anything about it. Did you ever talk to him directly about it? Like ask him if it was um, true? I did. I don't really remember. Do you ever remember him saying yes? Dude, he literally did the same thing to a fucking cat. Thinking about killing people a year ago. How about when you were 12? Did you think about killing? No. So, what in your life has changed, or what in your mind has changed? To make I you don't know. Was it like something all of a sudden one day you woke up and thought, I'll kill someone, or was it a gradual? It was gradual, I think. So, tell me about when those thoughts were still happening. Well, in high school. The interrogation is again redacted here, but Brian says, quote, Called me weird, but I think everyone has had thoughts of shooting up their school. I suppose I just don't really like people. Uh, but he wanted to read really bizarre things and things that we didn't have in the library. Um, uh, I no. Actually checked no, actually. And I had convinced them it was for other methods. Herping behavior. We weren't obviously the only class that was having issues with them, and I remember said that they met with mom. Yeah, dude, the fact that, like, I don't know, just friends didn't, you know... Um, just insane, man. Just insane. Um, so what, what did he end up getting? What, what's his name? Brian Cohey. Sentence. 2023, uh, hold on, let me fix my cam. In 2023, a jury convicted Cohe of first-degree murder for killing Warren, tampering with a dead body, and tampering with evidence. He received a life sentence without a possibility of parole, despite pleading insanity. So he didn't even get, bro, I'm gonna be honest, he sounds a little insane, but um, I'm glad. So he's just rotting away for life then. Fuck yeah. I'm glad nothing bullshit happened with that, you know? That's a W. Because, I, dude, I've heard some crazy stories and people just, like, somehow get, like, lower sentences than we expect. And I'm just glad that's not one of them, dude. That's crazy. I mean, we're definitely going to be doing more, like, more shit like that because I like it, you know? I like it and I hope you guys like it as well. I haven't really done it um, in years, to be honest. Uh, I haven't done like any type of crew try, crew try, <laughs> crew try. That's what we're gonna call the streams. All right, we're gonna call it crew trime, dude. That's perfect. That is that is great branding. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the cat alone deserves a life sentence. Yeah, dude, that's fuck. Oh man, I wonder how old he was when he did that. He said 2018. Okay, so if that happened, 2021, he was 19. So what, three years ago? Bro, he was 16 when he did that. 16 when he did that, man. Fuck. Um, yeah, the series is gonna be called Crew Trime, okay? Gonna be doing it, and we're we're gonna be doing it soon. And doing it more often now. W. That's crazy. You guys got me hooked. I don't like you. <laughs>